everybody. Today we're going to talk about the Cura software, which is part of the Robo 3D printing software package. And I want to talk a little bit about what Cura actually does. Cura is a, called a slicing software. So you built your object in whatever program, whether it's Tinkercad, Thingiverse, wherever you got your, your file, your object. Now you need to bring it over and, and the printer needs to figure out how it's going to actually print the job. Now certainly you could take your raw object file that you built elsewhere and plug it directly into the printer and it would print it right in the middle of your build plate at whatever settings, however large or small you made it. And your odds are because there may not be supports or infill or other settings, you may get a print failure. So having running the slicing software is a really important step. Now to get that, you're going to come here to the Robo page, uh, which I'll put a link in the description below. And you're looking for Cura for Robo, models R2 and C2 only. Notice that there are other Robo Cura software out there. So you're looking specifically one for R2 and C2 only. Go ahead and download it. And so here we are inside the software. Now I want to talk about some of the settings first and then I'm going to drop, bring in some objects and I'm going to talk about arranging them on the build plate. So over here it's going to def uh, define what material you're printing in. For the Archdiocese we use PLA. Underneath there you can choose the quality. I like normal quality as my go-to print quality. If you wanted something that was super, super uh, professional and really, really fine detail, you could move to high quality. This is going to greatly impact your print time. Obviously, if you need, just wanted to print a whole bunch of stuff out, time is a factor. You could move it to low quality. And those pieces might just require extra sanding. Some of the detail might not be as nice. Coming down, as we print things, especially uh, things that could be hollow inside, that can really impact, let's say you want to do a box, well if that box is hollow inside, the printing the top part of that box is going to be really difficult because there's nothing to actually, that material to stick to. So I recommend using the light, which is the default setting. Again, depending on what you're printing, the complexity, the size, you may need to switch this, but for definitely just an initial print, I would stick to light. Now, one thing we also lose track of is when we're printing objects that maybe have overhangs or have uh, pieces that don't necessarily stand right on top of one another, they require supports, especially if there's hollow areas in your object. I turn this on, I let the program figure out where it's going to put the supports. Now, the next one is build plate, and that's a little print raft that's going to print underneath your object in between the print plate and then your object. This really helps align for any slight level issues or if there's any little bumps in the print plate. It allows for a better print, so I definitely encourage you to use that as well. Now, I, with using Cura, I highly recommend using an external mouse. You can do this on the trackpad. It's very cumbersome because you can use your right click to change the orientation of your print view. And this is going to be important to make sure that you don't have overhangs, that things are fully aligned on the print bed, etc. So let's go ahead, let's grab our objects, and then we'll, we'll arrange them. Okay, so right from here, I can see that as it is laid out right now, this object will print, but these objects won't. You can see how this one's hanging off the page, and it looks like this object just doesn't have quite enough room. So we need to resize and move these because we want to do as many projects at once as we can so that way it, it's running constantly and we don't have to constantly keep checking on it and running the next um, object file so this one's too big we need to scale it down now on the left hand side once i clicked on here my tools turned on so we have move so this would be allow me to reposition it on a left right up down front and back basis we have the scale and i can adjust a uniform scaling and here's also where I can see exactly what are my dimensions. This is really important because the software, you could put something that say was 10 feet tall. Well our printer can only print an object that's about say 8 inches tall. So it'll allow you to upload a, an object that's bigger than the print bed 
but it will just cut it off and you'll get a big mess at the top of your object. So this is, and a lot of times when the kids are building their objects, they're not necessarily paying attention to actually the size of it. So you can manually adjust the sizes here, or you can uh, use these to adjust the scale, or you could say like, I want it to be 75%, and then you could adjust it from there as well. Coming down, we have the ability to rotate an object. So this little foam stand, we, we tend to want to have the object standing upright, but a lot of times that can actually cause weakness in our structure. So if I wanted to print this pen, if I printed it in an upright position and the printer was doing little tiny circles, the, printer, the, the pen would actually be really, really brittle to break because it's just little tiny circles on top, or maybe it was a screwdriver, it'd be really brittle. So instead, if you print it long-wise and you get these long loops of material, you're going to have much more integrity here. So even something like this foam stand, and this is going to come from trial and error, I might actually want to print it on its side versus upright. Um, the printer's going to have an easier time of doing these angles than if, if it were floating printing up on the angle is a really challenging thing for the printer to do. So I always try to make it so it's as flat as possible, uh, takes up the least amount of room on our build plate as possible, and um, also that it has the, uh, will probably use the fewest number of supports. So I'm definitely gonna print this one on its side. I can flip an object and mirror it, which is also really nice. So with that being said, let's let's kind of I'm gonna rearrange these. I'm gonna speed this up in post production so you won't hear me saying it. One thing I wanted to show you was anything that you see that's red, those are that's where the supports are going to be placed. And so you can a lot of times by manipulating your object see where the supports are going to go. Now as you are once you have built this, you can save the project, but it actually adds in a different file name. And so I found that when I'm ready to print this, you actually, it's better to come down here and click on save to file. Now for the archdiocese, we're recommending that you save these to a, a USB stick, plug the USB stick into the printer, and then print from there. If you're in a situation where you've connected the printer to your network, right from here is where you would be able to actually push a print job out to the printer. The nice part about doing it by USB stick is while the one object's printing, while this is printing, I can then be importing and building the next print job. So the idea is, is my printer is running as much of the time as possible, actively printing, and very little downtime. So I'm using that downtime to organize, lay out these files. I might even be able to put another object in here. And then now uh, this print job will probably take, uh, it says 13 hours and five minutes. It'll probably take closer to 15. Um, and so I'm going to let this run overnight and come in the next morning, take off the old one, put the new, uh, run the new print job. So that way my printer's constantly going and I don't have to do as much babysitting. If I was doing these one at a time, I'd constantly have to be touching the printer. So this is a little overview of Cura. There are other slicing programs out there. One of them that we recommend, Astro Print Free. Really nice program. Has uh, some, some other additional capacities and capabilities. But Cura for Robo is a great slicing application and definitely um, really excellent at what we need it to do. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below.